Welcome to the car guys. This week, the Ferrari 812 Superfast. The latest generation of Ferrari front-engined V12 supercars. <laughs> So this is the first time I've actually sat in a working 812 super fast. I've purposely not gone near the car until now, mainly because I've got one on order and I didn't really want to spoil it. But I sort of saw the car sat here at my local dealer, which is Meridian Modena in Lyndhurst in Hampshire. They've left me here all alone with the car. I've got the keys so I can do pretty much whatever I want with it. I've given Jason a call, he's on his way down. This for us would be the first drive on UK roads of the 812 Superfast, and we're gonna take this car out and see what we think of it. Instantly, this feels like an incredibly capable and yet at the same time, incredibly fast GT car. I'm struggling to find any weak points at the moment, which is incredible. See what happens when Jason gets here. So here it is, the Ferrari 812 Superfast. Very excited today to have the 812 Superfast lent to us by Meridian Modena. 789 brake horsepower, that's 800 PS if you're into that sort of thing. Peak horsepower is achieved at eight and a half thousand revs, but it actually revs to just a shy under 9,000 RPM. It weighs 1,630 kilograms. It's got the same downforce underside as the F12 TDF. The Superfast features brand new electric steering, which contributes to the car's incredible handling. I like the, the cut of the panel where the bonnet meets the nose comb and that little vent. I like the way that, that that looks, I think that's quite nice. The F12 was a very aggressive very looking aggressive. car. I mean, I absolutely loved it, but this is very obviously a lot more, dare I say, a lot more feminine, a lot more swoopy, a lot more curvy. And, and it's it also is. very similar, I think. The inspiration definitely came from the 365 Daytona. So are these GTC rear lights on this? They are. They're pretty much the same as the GTC4 Lusso, which I like. I think those deep dish lights look I love amazing. Them. Yeah, they look absolutely brilliant. And that rear diffuser's insane, isn't it? It's actually a real wing on the back of the car. I think it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Look at it. Here we go. The boot area of your 812 GT Cruiser. The 812 Superfast interior, actually quite an improvement over the F12. Massive improvement. Yeah, I mean, we've got full leather in this one all round with red stitching You've got a nice bit of gloss carbon fiber in here which actually i sort of prefer oh awkward i know i know i loved the satin and the tdf but i think i prefer gloss overall extra little cubby hole here for your phone other electrical devices glove box rear parcel shelf it feels very gt luso it's nicer feels a little bit more spacious doesn't it I think it's much nicer than the TDF. This is it then, the new 812 Superfast wow. from Ferrari, V12, 6.5 litres, it's the daddy. It is the daddy, this is king of the hill, top of the tree. So immediate first impressions, it feels smaller than the F12. Right. I don't know why, I think it could be seating position, I think it's to do with the controls, the way that everything reacts more quickly. But for some reason, even though they're pretty much the same size cars, this feels a lot more nimble, a lot more lithe, and a lot more controllable on British roads. Is that to do with the rear wheel steer that's giving it a bit more nimble feel? And... I, I think it is. Yeah, I think, I think it's got the latest generation sort of rear wheel steer and electric steering for the right. first time as well. So this is like the new steering, which I have to say, I can't really tell the difference in terms of feel to the old steering, which is so probably a good- the old steering was completely dead. No, no, <laughs> the old steering is one of the best steering feels <laughs> of any road car. Oh, right, that, that, yeah, that's what I mean. Not, not, it's completely dead. But for them to put electric steering in 
and for it to feel this good first time is quite an achievement, I think. The exterior of the car isn't, feels like a bit of a facelift, but the interior is such a step on from the old F12. One thing I noticed is the bumpy road setting seems to do nothing. That, oh really? Yeah. That's no effect on it, was No it? effect, it's literally the same. Is like, it disconnected? Maybe the button's disconnected. Maybe, maybe. But with a 458, you kind of can tell the difference. This, not at all. Yeah. How are you finding that uh, new and improved colour passenger display? I mean, I love the new improved colour. Yeah. I mean, it's still utterly pointless, don't get me wrong. Um, the little G-Force ball is quite cool. Uh, you know, even though no, it doesn't react that quickly. Uh, <laughs> how can I scroll across? How do I do that? Well, that's interesting. Normally, you can select different oh, different yeah. things on it, like trip computer type stuff. Oh, you can no, normally I've got do. Oh, back button, everything. Oh, oh it's now. touch screen. It's touch screen. Oh, that's. Oh, look at that. PDA, look. So oh, that's sport, F track, music. What's the four wheel steering display? Is that showing us so when it's doing it? Change position of magneto. Oh, look at that. Everything lights up yellow. Lovely. Right now, change it up to another one. I mean, I'm not sure why you need to know that information. Because I can need to ready my diaper. <laughs> but when you put your foot down, I don't know. I think there's quite a lot of noise in the cabin. There's a lot of tyre roar. A lot of tyre roar. I didn't notice that. On smoother roads, you really don't notice it on motorways and things. But on this normal B road, that's, that's quite, that's that's quite, quite noisy, loud. isn't it? I think that would get very tedious after a while. <laughs> This steering is incredible. Everyone talked about changing to this system, but it is superb. I mean, it's so light. What happens is, if you get into trouble, if the car senses that you've lost control or that it is yawing uncontrollably or, or the back end steps out, I think it actually even speeds it up automatically. Really? To help you get out of really? it. Really? As well as then bringing in all of that attraction and stability. But isn't that oh. gonna confuse you though? Aren't you gonna overreact to something if you do that? To be honest, if the back goes out on this, I don't <laughs> care how much it overreacts. I want it to react very, very quickly. I mean, we have got a mere 11 horsepower shy of 800 in this. Yes. Yes, I mean, that, that is ludicrous for normal roads, has to be said, and, and believe me... It's pretty ludicrous for any bloody road. <laughs> but in the dry, this will wheel spin easily in any gear up to fifth. Oh, why do we always go over small skinny bridges? Where is it with you and skinny <laughs> bridges in big cars? I don't know, I thought we'd just try a different route. <laughs> So one of the complaints I had about the original F12 was it, it felt a little bit like a oh, I don't know. it felt a little bit like a Mark III Cortina. Yes, that's right. We didn't like it, did we? The, the basic the weight transfer over the rear when you dive into a corner because the steering was so direct made it feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. What's this one like? I mean, to me, I felt immediately at home in this car. So I didn't think, it's still got a bit of it, it's still got a little bit of the old wobble and float of the F12, but you can feel it instantly get reined in. Right. So as soon as it goes there, it, you, you then also feel it nip in and correct, and it feels really assured. So I've got no problem hustling this pretty quickly straight away. Whereas with the F12, we were intimidated by the bulk. Yeah, and it felt massive. And the shimmies just meant we backed off constantly. This is quite good up here as well. actually well controlled. I quite like that. I thought we were going to get some air there, man. Yep, exactly. But we didn't, did we? In any other car, I think this would be all over the place, but uh, it's amazing Can you how well... Can imagine an SLR down there at yeah. that speed? No chance. We did. So yeah, the electronic trickery that they've added to this car, I mean, this is so far ahead of the F12 as, as to be like the gap between the 430 and the 458. Right. I mean, it, it is night and day, and it is no surprise to me at all that people are jumping out of F12s as Straight soon as they, these. yeah, as soon as they've driven this, they've they've binned their F12s. Right. And this is such a beautiful look at the way you can just sweep through, and it just feels completely planted. It does. The grip levels feel enormous. And you know, it will break if you if you're a bit silly with the old throttle. It will snap away from you, but you it's so it's so looking? controllable. <laughs> Honestly, it's so controllable. See the traction; it gets it gets traction pretty bloody quickly. It's good traction. Yes, turn that thing back. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the problem, isn't it? You can see all the little naughty things I'm doing. <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, before I do it, it's, that takes a bit of the fun away, doesn't it? I well, can't scare can't... you in that same way. <laughs> you can just see me surreptitiously, <laughs> look, yeah, moving it. exactly what you're see, doing. See, look, just yeah. over to there. See, see off goes orange, then EST, EST. Oh. See, off just goes red. The whole thing just goes red. And it gives you a little bit of a stern klaxon as well to say, no, you really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> And also, because you got the brakes from the LaFerrari... It stops! They stop. Christ, that they really stop. stops, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah so yeah, no. dynamic, the first impression, that's worth the price of the admission straight away. Steering wheel feels a little bit smaller, but it's, it feels got great. Silly flat bottoms on them. All of these little controls are smaller. Play See that? Yeah, Big yeah, old... Yeah, that's a huge piece of kit, isn't Yeah, it? it's not the greatest thing. I have dazzled people accidentally a little bit with it. One thing I noticed as well, this car does, and it, it may be standard in cars, but I've never noticed. If you're driving along and you come to a corner and you turn the corner, it turns on a light on the side of the car to light up the corner yeah. that you're going into. Is that normal? All modern cars do that. Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah. I've never noticed you've that never before, noticed that. ever. Really? Yeah. Like you can go down a lane like this, do this, and it, will light and, and it lights cords. up. Yeah, yeah. Is that, you probably get that in a Ford Mondeo, do you? Yeah. Um, oh Sorry. well, forget that. Heaven upon heaven. Ah, ah. They fix the indicators. Oh, are we going for, this is the indicator, right? It's where well, it's not. They've taken them from the GTC4 Lusso, which means they work proper feel, nice positive action. They don't keep auto cancelling all the time. You are less likely to plow into a car at a roundabout because your indicator is turned off halfway through. So that makes me very happy. <laughs> It's very, very nimble. It's obviously ludicrously quick. The handling and the traction is there and you can stop. So it's more user-friendly well, than the TDF ever was. Yes, but it's an unbeatable GT car. I mean, I don't think there is a better car in this class at all. This is as near to perfect as it gets. <laughs> places to drive it before. This is a proper first drive on British soil. I can see what you mean, how small it feels as soon as you're in the driver's seat. Straight away, isn't it? Yeah, whereas, it feels very the F12 small. Whereas the felt oh, higher and more yeah. intimidating. I like that brake pedal feel, that's quite good as well. It's light, but it you get more retardation the harder you push. They've sorted out the throttle pedal as well. It's not bouncy. And although I'm not using a lot of it, I still feel like it's quite precise. Oh, that turning. Oh, hello, missus. Yeah. That is incredible. Oh, yeah. It's just beautiful. That is inc Oh, that is brilliant. God, you can get some G-forces there, can't you? <laughs> hey? If only I had the G-force meter on. don't get the weight shift that is completely dialed out now yeah. there is no weight shift whatsoever so it does inspire confidence the only thing I would say is it does feel a bit light on its toes yeah but not as much as that f12 that we drove first of all no you drive it with your fingertips almost. yeah you do it's incredible which is odd because it's such a big car yeah. you don't expect to drive a car this sort of size like that do you it weighs 1630 kilograms this. Does it? So it's not a, a true, it's not a lightweight, it's not bad for such a big car. Well, the way that you describe it now is the virtual short wheelbase system. So they're on version right. two of that, and that's a combination of the rear wheel steer, the electric steering, and a few other bits of trickery. Oh, it's good. But it, it is all good. To give you that sensation that you're feeling right now. You can definitely tell why people are ditching F12s. I know, it's like it's like prehistoric by comparison. So it revs to just under 9,000 RPM. Not on this bloody road, it won't. But your peak power comes at eight and a half. The ability to place it on the road is frankly ridiculous. This particular road has a six foot six warning, width warning as you enter it. Yeah. I've had no problem with other cars passing. You can just go, I know where that front wheel is. 
it's not as good looking a car, I don't think, as the F12. No. And I like the swoopiness, and I do like the fact that it harks back to the Daytona, but it's not quite as aggressive. And I thought, if anything, when it was unveiled, this was going to look a lot more aggressive than even the F12, so I was almost yeah, a bit it disappointed. Did it. It's, it's definitely softer. You can drive it on the throttle as well. Yeah, 0-60, 2.9 seconds, top speed 211. Oh, oh my 211! God! You just cannot beat a Ferrari V12. This would be mental on a circuit. We have encountered some inclement weather. First of all, trying to find the windscreen wipers on this bloody steering wheel without flicking the paddle at the same time is utterly rubbish. Second of all, my God, this is frightening the wet. <laughs> Jesus. Nearly 800 brake horsepower. This is like TDF levels of frightening in the wet. In the wet? In the wet. See, I'm so frightened, I can't even talk. Because it's wet and it's a little bit squirrely, the weight does come back into play because it can't move the back wheels quick enough or do all the other things, that it's clever stuff that it's doing. So you do start to feel a little bit more of the weight moving around as you're changing direction. I'm literally splitting hairs here. It is a tremendous car. I was struggling to find things, niggles about it, and all I came up with really was I didn't like the two-tone coloured windows. <laughs> didn't like those. No. And, uh, when you put the fuel petrol thing in yeah it's uh, it doesn't really allow you to put full pressure so it's obviously a little bit of a, of a small nozzle oh, so that's very annoying if you're trying to fill it that up is with pretty petrol. annoying yeah it takes you like 10 times as long yeah and really the the sort of chunkiness of the of the high beam and the headlights thing everything else is an absolute dream this car is a triumph <laughs> no it's a ferrari oh shit Key Thorpe has left the vehicle. Nice. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review of the 812 Superfast. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, ding that notification bell for when we've got another video uploaded, and come and find us on Instagram at thecarguys.tv. We'll see you on the next one. Beep.